Hello and welcome to this Share the Joy conference. I am Joe B. Provida of the Catholic Talks, and I'd like to share this reflection entitled, Being Found. Now, there is this wise principle that says we cannot give something that we do not have. So, if we want to share joy, we can't do that if we don't know what it is, or if we don't have it. So, the obvious question that we will need to ask is, do I have joy? Now, this becomes a little bit tricky because joy can be defined many ways. Uh, Google defines it as a feeling of great pleasure and happiness. Some dictionaries will define it as a source or cause of keen pleasure or delight. So, if I buy things from Amazon and they make me happy, does that mean I have joy? If I watch movies that make me laugh, that doesn't mean I have joy. If I indulge in food and drink and it gives me pleasure, does that mean I have joy? Uh, if having joy is as simple as that, then if I eat, drink, buy stuff and watch comedies all day, would that make me joyful? Um, if we think that way, we still know that those who have a lot of things, who have everything, don't necessarily have joy in their lives. So joy must be something else. I think a safe place to understand joy is in sacred scripture. And so let's do that. Uh, one of the Psalms that stirs my emotion and also reminds me of joy is Psalm 126. But before we go to that, let's give it a little bit background so we can understand it a little bit better. Um, let, this brings us back to the Old Testament after King David had died. Uh, it was a time when Israel broke up. Um, the succeeding kings of Israel fell back into idolatry and, the, and Israel split. There was a northern kingdom, and because of the split, the north, it, they were easily conquered, and the northern kingdom fell into the hands of Tilgath Pileser of Assyria. And he exiled the citizens of the northern kingdom to Assyria. And years after that, Jerusalem also fell into the hands of Babylon, and the Jews were also exiled to that foreign land. <clears throat> this captivity and exile brought much shame to Israel. Now, we have to imagine that during the time of David and Solomon, Israel, Jerusalem especially, was a wonder of the world. Everybody looked up at Jerusalem. The temple was the most beautiful thing. And Israel, Israel was flourishing in riches and culture. Uh, and this is the reason why we read the, why uh, the Queen of Sheba visited uh, Solomon in Jerusalem. She wanted to see what the world was talking about. But decades later, Israel was in utter ruin. Its citizens were prisoners in distant lands. And those in Israel felt great embarrassment and at the same time, the feeling that God had abandoned them. Now, the identity of Israel is that they know they are the chosen people of God. But how can that be if God allowed them to be exiled in foreign lands? Um, they, they felt that God had abandoned them. It was the same feeling too for the exiles, especially for the exiles. They longed to be back home. They were in a place that they were forced to worship other gods, to eat pork and other uh, uh, meat or uh, food that was unlawful to them. So they missed their families. They missed their food. They missed being a place where worshiping Yahweh was, was the norm. And so it is at this time that Jeremiah was sent by God to give them some good news. Jeremiah said, Shout with joy for Jacob. Look, I will bring them back from the land of the north. Then young women shall make merry and dance, young men and old as well. I will turn their mourning into joy. And this, of course, became a reality when the exiles uh, in Babylon were ar allowed to return. Uh, this is the sentiment of Psalm 126, where we read, When the Lord restored the captives of Zion, we thought we were dreaming. Then our mouths were filled with laughter. Our tongues sang for joy. There is a feeling of joy when there is a return. And the parables of our Lord also express the same kind of joy when something has returned. This is the New Testament. The parable of the lost sheep, for example. The shepherd rejoices when, the, when he finds the lost sheep. He puts it in his shoulders and brings it home. It is a deeper joy than over the ones that weren't lost 
and he calls his friends to a party because he wants because he wants to uh, have rejoice with them he's found his lost sheep the parable of the lost coin is also the same a woman asks her friends to party with her because she has found the lost coin she's been sweeping the whole night and she found her lost coin she wants to rejoice with them and of course we can't miss the masterpiece in luke's gospel the prodigal son we know it it's a son who squanders his life and his inheritance and returns to his father who puts together a party to rejoice at the return of his son but we shouldn't miss the small detail that the father ran to the son even if the son was far away it meant that the father must have been looking outside the window to find any sign of his son's return and when the father put the party together it wasn't just any party but a special one the fattened calf the one the one that they were reserving for a special occasion that was the one that the father chose to to slaughter to eat for the party now maybe we can't relate to the parable of a lost sheep because we are we aren't shepherds we don't have a field we we don't own sheep but maybe let's replace with replace this with the parable of the lost dog Im let's imagine that, that you are a lost dog owner uh, rather you are a dog owner and who has lost who has a few dogs at home and one day you go to a dog park and you allow your dogs to run on their own and then when it's time to go home you notice that one dog is missing so you go all over the park looking for the dog every nook and cranny that uh, your dog might be hiding or lost in now the dog apparently has fallen inside a sewer pipe a dry sewer pipe and it is shallow but it's too narrow for the dog to maneuver so it is stuck so two things can happen you can call out the dog's name and when the dog hears it hears his name hears your voice recognizes your voice it barks and you keep calling the dog's name and the dog keeps barking and you that way you can trace the sound of the bark and then you eventually find him and help him out and there is great rejoicing now the, another thing the other thing that can happen is that you call you call out and the dog doesn't make a sound you call all day and night and for some reason the dog remains silent and you never find that dog and it's a tragic ending and the lesson of the story of this parable is that sometimes the thing that is lost must want to be found he or she or it must signal for help must signal its whereabouts make a sound shoot a flare do something the alternative is risk never being found and in the parables we see that god is the shepherd we are the lost sheep the woman God is the woman and we are the lost coin. God is the father of the prodigal son. We are the we are the we are the lost son. He has lost us. God has lost us. And isn't this the story of the whole Bible that God is in search for us? Uh, we read as early as uh, Genesis uh, when Adam disobeyed God, uh, he hid in the garden and God asked, "Where are you?" Of course we know God knows all things. He knows where Adam and Eve is and so his question was not about adam's geographic location his question can be rephrased like this adam where is your heart does it still belong to me but adam doesn't answer the question directly he said i heard you walking in the garden so i hid that's not an answer he evaded the question he evades the gaze of god and you know what that is like when you have a a problem there's something wrong with a relationship with someone you can look directly in the, that person's eyes and this is the story of humanity uh, we've become so dysfunctional in our relationship with god that we are lost we prefer to find delight in something else uh even eventually losing our gaze in the face of god gazing to something else and um it reminds me of the event uh the time when peter saw our lord walking on water peter asked if he could join him our lord said join me and peter got into the water and started to walk and um but when he saw that the waves were getting turbulent that, that the waves were turbulent around him when he took his eyes away from the lord that's when he started to sink and that's the way we are too and so how do we get unlost how can god find us we must make a sound we must make a signal we must want to be found and we do this in prayer we gaze at our lord and ask him to find us he is the good shepherd who constantly reaches 
searches for us, searches for his lost sheep. He is the woman who sweeps the entire house in search for us. He's the father. Uh, he's the father of us who are prodigal sons and prodigal daughters. He's always looking outside his window just in case we make a sound, just in case we make a signal that we are ready to be found, that we are ready to come home. And you know you are found when you can gaze into the face of our Lord. There is this inner joy that can't be disturbed by turbulent waves around us. It is a feeling of trust that our Lord won't let us sink. Then, just like the exiles who returned to Jerusalem, there shall be laughter in our mouths, songs in our lips. And we know what this joy is like because we can feel it. And when we know what this joy is like, we can direct the gaze of others towards God so they too can be found. And so hopefully when God asks hum humankind that question again, where are you? We can answer in unity, I am here, Lord. I am by your side. And that alone gives me joy. And God can, can gaze upon our faces, open his arms, smile and say, Welcome home, my son. Welcome home, my daughter. Welcome home. Let's be found. Let's help others get found. And then we can all have joy. Once again, this is Joe B. Provida of the Catholic Talks. If you like this, you can find similar content at thecatholictalks.com and at facebook.com slash thecatholictalks. May God bless you and bye-bye.